Welcome back to the GP Productions podcast. Welcome back to the show and I have a very special guest on the show today. It's Miss Kate Hodge, an actress that a lot of you watching will probably know from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 Leatherface. Kate, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me today. How are you? Hi, thank you. No problem. I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Very good. Very good. So look, I, as I said to you off camera, this will be the easiest breeze of an interview you ever do. So yeah. I'm going to ask you like the question that I ask everyone and uh, that you're probably asked all the time but nonetheless it's an important one how did yeah. you get into the the world of like say tv and movies initially was it a dream of yours at a young age or how did it happen it was always a dream of mine since i was a little girl and i went to my mom took me to my first uh, live ballet performance and then i wanted to be on stage and so i took ballet and then i took theater in college and then i sort of slipped into TV, but I think the first thing I pretty much did was Texas Chainsaw, which was thrilling. So um, yeah, it was always a dream. It's always been my favorite thing to perform. Thrown in at the deep end as well. A lot of people I talked in the acting world, it's amazing, like 99.9% .9 of them have been involved in theater in some way. Yes, I think so. I even did a little mime in, in, in Paris with Marcel Marceau back in the way back in the 80s. So I just, yeah, just any kind of performing, mime, dance, theater. Yeah, and yeah. you've done, I think it was what, one TV show before going into Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Was that, is that, I think it went Tales from the Crypt, 30 something. And then the big, the big thing was Texas Chainsaw. Although it feels like 90, 89 was Texas Chainsaw. That's when we started filming it. Yeah. So I guess it was after a couple of TV shows, but the but the filming the movie and filming the movie at night in actually Central California in Valencia to look like Texas, but it was uh, all took place at night. So we shot um, all night for like eight weeks, um, five, what was in it like? five in the afternoon to five in the morning, and it was just crazy. <laughs> Super fun, great cast: Ken Foray, William Butler. Um, of course, the very unknown Vigo Mortensen at the time, yeah. and uh, he was great. It was just so much fun and so much. I wasn't really into horror movies until I was in one and realized how much fun it was to make them. Like, it's just a lot of laughing, actually, even when you're getting nailed to a chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. You yeah. were obviously... You were obviously aware of the first couple of movies, but you did you watch them before? Yes, I did. You know, I was like, yeah. oh, my God, this looks so scary. But then when you're actually making them, you realize how much that, you know, it's make-believe and it's not a real chainsaw. And, but it was really fun to be kind of that, to have such a physical role while I'm running through the woods and falling on the ground and swinging rocks at things and, I said to the director, the lovely Jeff Burr, I said, oh, when I pull my my hands out of the nails, I took mime in Paris, so I'll know how to like resist and do the little snap at the end. And he's like, oh, that's so cool. It was like this whole collaboration, which is the whole reason I fell in love with, you know, the performing arts. It's all teamwork. Yeah. Yeah. And did you guys have a lot of fun making that movie? Because as you, as you kind of alluded to there, it was a lot of laughing and joking. And a lot of laughing. Um, Tom Everett was a lot, there was a lot of improvising there with his dialogue. Like, you know, is it soup yet? And 
mascara, California bitch mascara face. That was not in the script, but I <laughs> did a great, a great job on the script, but there was just so many funny, um, enthusiastic actors as cannibals that it got very <laughs> tongue in cheek, <laughs> very tongue in cheek and, and very fun. So it was a lot of fun on the set. So you guys kind of got a little bit of, we say creative freedom then as well, if something worked that wasn't planned, it could be left. Yeah. In. Yeah. It was, you know, you could try it and um, new line was kind enough to leave a lot of it in the movie. Yeah. And how did you end up getting that role initially? Well, initially I was, um, it was down to me and an, another beautiful actress, Marsha Gross or Marsha Cross, sorry, yeah. redhead, you know, very pretty. And I was, you know, frizzy haired and freckled and, um, Billy Butler actually was uh, was hired first as the boyfriend, and yeah. and the producers asked him, you know, which one do you see as your girlfriend? Because you know we can't really decide. And Billy's famous line was, um, "Oh, the fuzzy one, the fuzzy one," <laughs> because he goes, "That redhead would never go out with me. She's too high class." <laughs> and that's and that's how they ended up ultimately going for you then. Yeah, yeah, and then That's we kind of looked. We kind of looked like you know nerds together, and we're still friends. Still friends thirty whatever years later. Yeah, and how does it feel, kind of looking back on it, to be involved in kind of a franchise like that? That's one of the most iconic franchises in horror. Well, it's quite the honor, particularly about twelve years ago when I started doing the horror conventions, and was blown away by how many fans there are and how sweet they are. Like the horror fans are the most wonderful fans, I think on the planet. They're very loyal and very sweet. And I'm very proud to be a part of the old Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. Yeah, I was I was gonna touch on conventions and you, you just did there as well. Like for anyone, mm. I've actually never been to a horror convention. We, we haven't had one in Ireland. We had one, that's a lie, but it wasn't really well advertised and I actually did not know it was on and there was loads of cool people over here like Kane Hodder and Alex Vincent and different people like that. Yeah. And I was working maybe 20 minutes from where this thing was and I didn't know about it until like three years later. Oh I really, I really, I really I hope think... the promoters never watch this because I think <laughs> I've said this to like five or six people now. Sorry, promoters, you did a bad job. I think maybe, um, cause I see Kane at a lot of the conventions in, I mean, almost all of the conventions. Yeah. And uh, he was the stunt guy on Texas Chainsaw Part 3 with us. And I think he has a great story about a convention in Ireland where there was like, it was like in a warehouse surround, like there was no people. There was Everybody was freezing. Like nobody came because nobody knew it was happening. Yeah. I, I think, think it's kind of a legendary event. Okay. Well, I haven't had the honor of talking to Kane yet on this show, but hopefully in the future I will. And I will ask him about that. Yeah. Drop my name. Cause we're, he's really, we're really good friends. Yeah. I'll drop it in the email. Kate said that you have. Yeah, Kate Hodge Irish. recommended you said you're amazing and that you never turn things down. <laughs> <laughs> sure. He would love that. Yeah. He'd be like, you're good. but this, the, this convention world anyway, it's, it's kind of bonkers for people that, don't know about it or don't know what it is like how would you if if you were trying to sell me to go to a convention how would you put it um okay if you like the circus and you like halloween you will love a convention because there's like crazy people crazy costumes but mostly everyone's covered in blood with various tools going through their bodies like a saw in your head or like it's some really great like replicas of famous movies, like the Ghostbusters. You always see those guys at conventions. Yeah. So it's like a big costume. It's a big gory costume party. Yeah, and we yeah. we touched on we touched on Kane's convention story. I always ask people, everyone's got a convention story. What's your funny or crazy convention story? My crazy my it was my first convention that I just showed up at, and I didn't realize you had to have pictures of yourself. And I didn't know, I didn't even have a pen to sign the, cause I didn't have pictures. And I just happened to be sitting next to uh, Jeff Er, who was the director of Texas Chainsaw. And he had a bunch of extra posters of the movie. 
And then the guy that handles um, Jeff Burr was like, do you need like a convention manager? And I go, apparently I do. So then it got out and the fans were like, oh, don't worry, we'll bring things for you to sign. Like, so this guy brought in this huge chainsaw and another guy brought in like a lunch bag, a lunch box. So it, I got creative, but I think I, that was the most overwhelmed I've ever been because and then that was the convention when this young woman, probably in her twenties, came up to me in tears saying that my, the TV show She Wolf of London that I did had like changed her life and made her strong. And, you know, she always thought of Randy Wallace when she was getting like teased or bullied in high school and she was crying and I was crying and I'm like, this is really amazing. Cause I was, you know, what you act and you do these things and particularly TV and um, movies, you don't see the audience's reaction. They're yeah. miles, you know, miles away. So it really dawned on me that, you know, it's a, such a fun profession because you do affect people, even if you may never meet them. You yeah, know, that's you can, what I was going to say. It's, it's yeah. crazy how like different things can have an effect on people in their lives and they just kind of resonate to it or yeah, it just, yeah. it just sticks with them. Yeah. Um, obviously, are you getting to do many conventions these days? Because I see like the world, especially in America, is like full of horror conventions. Like anyone that I follow like on social media, you always see we're going here, we're going there. I was only talking to Brad Lurie last week. Him and Ken Kersinger were going together to some convention, flying yeah. together and meeting up all the time. So you obviously get to go to a good few of these things and meet up with people from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise and get to yeah. hang out, which is cool as well. Yeah, really cool. And sometimes we get, you know, if there's enough of us at one, we do a panel like Ken Frey, Jeff Burr and, and Billy and I were all in Texas together. So we did a panel talk, talk back to the audience. And, um, you know, there are so many, there's like, um, there's the, the night of the living dead weekend. And like, I tried to go to that one, but they're like, you're not a zombie. So you can't, you know, he weren't in a zombie <laughs> movie. So I'm like, wow, discrimination. No, I'm kidding. But, um, so there's just so many in the, and the fans, you know, I've seen, you know, repeat fans like that are almost like old friends, like, how you doing? You know? So it's, it's really neat. But I hear the really big ones are in Germany and England. There's a huge one in England. I think it's, I haven't been yet. I think it's in, it's always in October, I'm pretty sure, because around Halloween time. Oh, okay. Um, obviously wasn't on the last couple of years because of the pandemic. Pandemic, yeah. Yeah. How did that affect your line of work? Like, was it stagmented? And Everybody, and nothing you? happened, you know, stopped no. completely, yeah. And what was the last thing you were working on, we'll say, before everything went? Right before went. the pandemic, I did a, a guest spot on a tele network television show here in the United States called The Resident. It's about a young doctor, you know, a doctor hospital show. And I played uh, a woman who had went to like one of those drive through spine surgery places we have in America. Yeah. And uh, everything went totally wrong. And so they had this really cool fake open spine prosthetic on my back. And they're like flipping me over. And my dad, my dad saw it and he's like, Jesus, did they cut you open like that? I'm like, no. Um, and then they sew me up. And I've, you know, of course, they brought me to the hospital. I wasn't aware of what was going on. And it was kind of a fun part because I wake up and I'm like, I got, you know, I got to go to Vegas. I got tickets to Vegas. You know, I, I, kind of poker tournament or something. Okay. The doctor's like, you're not going anywhere. And I'm like, oh, come on, doc. I feel fine. <laughs> He's like, you, you can't move. Um, so that was fun. And I'm like, because I hadn't acted in a while. I kind of, you know, taken a little break. And then I'm like, you know, I really want to try and do it again. So I went back to audition and I got it. And I'm like, okay, I'm back on track. And then boom, pandemic. But then recently I did... Um, there's an app, I'm sure it's international, called Full, Full Moon Features app. Okay. And it's Charlie Band's, uh, all Charlie Band movies. And I was just in a little show of his called The Resonator, Beyond the Resonator. It's a series. And then in October, I was just, I, I, what's coming out in October is a movie called The Headless Horseman, where I play like a drug dealer's assistant. 
which is kind of fun. My first villain, which was really exciting. Yeah, because normally you're you're the 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 good girl. I'm usually you like you know, know, particularly in television. I'm like, listen, I got that. You know, I'm a detective, or I'm a mom. That's like, where's my boy? You know, yeah. that part. I was I was scrolling through your IMDb, and I'm like, what what will I ask her that probably nobody else will ask her? I just seen you're in an episode of Murder She Wrote. What did you do with that? <laughs> Oh, that was kind of fun, actually. I wanted to have my very, very rich yacht sailing husband murdered. And I can't remember if I did or not, but I was definitely a suspect. Oh, that was a long time ago. I still get like a little bit of royalties from that, like 25 cents here, 25 cents there. <laughs> Sounds like uh, my YouTube channel. <laughs> they don't pay very well. I hope they're not listening. Right. But that, that show used to be on that show used to be on here like all the time. Like maybe two or three times a day. I remember growing up and it was it's on here. It's still on in, in the States. It's still on a twenty four hours a day. It's crazy. Really? I never see it on yeah. TV anymore over here. Oh, they probably like your country probably was like, We can't take it anymore. <laughs> so the US are are if they keep playing it, those twenty five cents might keep rolling in anyway. So continue playing yeah, it. Yeah. I could make like, it three dollars a year could be kind of <laughs> lucrative <laughs> i was i was showing someone my like i have one video on youtube that has it was the biggest amount of views it got was fourteen thousand hits and i was showing a friend of mine there today it was like this is what i got from it 18 cent <laughs> <laughs> but rewind it back to the pandemic then when everything stopped how did you fill out your time or did you pick up any new hobbies or what did you get up to? Um, I sort of just did woodworking, if you want to call it that. I would yeah. find, um, I guess me and my ex-husband found like old furniture and would refurbish it. And we had sort of ended up with like, you know, 10 dressers. So I think we have enough dressers. <laughs> And then I realized that I was actually living in Vegas at the time. And then I realized, you know, I can't live in Vegas and I can't be married. So I, <laughs> I moved back to Los Angeles and started working again. Yeah. Yeah. And do you really need to be in the heart of things in LA? Like what's like, if you're looking for work, say, no, you just, you, have, you, you just have to be there. You, no? can live, you can live anywhere. It's just, I find particularly for me in a relationship, it's just, it's like I'm allergic to them or something. It's like I never had children, so I'm not like a deadbeat mom. But I'm just like, you know, can I, I want to go here. Well, that's not responsible. You know, we're in a marriage. And I'm like, well, then not, then you know what? Let's not be in a marriage. Then I can go wherever I want and go to any convention and do whatever the hell I want. So as long as you're yeah. free. And there's plenty of actor couples and actors that are married to non-actors that, you know, they make it work. I don't know why for me it just has never worked. Yeah. Uh, these things happen. Yeah, I'm kind of a Looney Tune too, so it's hard <laughs> to put up with me for too long. In, in in terms of what's coming up then over the next couple of months, do you want to talk me through it? Now, I know you talked about the, the Headless Horseman, but anything yeah, else? Yeah, Headless Horseman, like that's... Like? Now it's all about just sort of I'm trying to... Uh, get, the guy that played the drug dealer in The Headless Horseman is helping me because, you know, I'm middle-aged and technology is not my friend. He's helping me gather some of my latest footage, get it on a reel. I have a manager who's going to start pushing me a little bit more, like K. Hodge really is back in town. Because yeah. I tended to move a lot, like New York, New Jersey. I was all over the place. So um, they're like, well, that we, we never know where that girl is. So... <laughs> But now it's like, I'm here, I'm ready, I'm ready to work. I've got my 22-year-old mentality back, you know. Yeah, Focus. And you, see, Focus. and you seem to be really happy as well. Yes, I am. It's nice. Yeah, yes, yeah. I am very happy. <laughs> yeah. If people do want to follow you on social media, have you got those to hand or do you want me to just pop them in below? Uh, just pop them in below. It's at Hodge. See, this is me and my technology. I'm brand new at all on the spot i can look it up right now it'll say where'd it go what's my name i think it's hodge white hodge kate gray 
at Hodge Kate Gray, G R E Y. Excellent. That's my Insta. Insta. And my Facebook is uh, Kate Hodge. I think it's Kate Hodge Actor on Facebook. Yeah. Have you it. went into the TikTok world yet? I love watching TikTok, but I'm going to try it. Yeah. I I just couldn't. I could. I Sometimes I log on. And I just maybe put a clip of an interview on and then I just log back out because it's just not for me. Kind of like Snapchat. I think I'm too old for it, you know? Yeah. It can get like silly and then you're like, wow, where did that hour just go? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it's, but it's, there are uh, some clever there are some clever people out there. Yeah. What is your if you were to say, if I was to ask you, what is the dream? acting role for you in a movie that's already been made what would you pick oh like it doesn't matter how old i am right now no i would have loved to have a crack at francis farmer the jessica lang movie in like 1984 that's what really inspired me to act i was really into dancing and then i saw jessica lang perform in Francis the movie and I was blown away so that would be a great role to do yeah one more quick fire question which okay. do you prefer which do you prefer TV or movies to act in TV is great particularly because of the money but movies are more fun because you have more freedom more freedom on the set more it's more of a one project TV is kind of you're a guest and it's very corporate. So movies. Okay. Kate, pleasure talking to you today on the show. Maybe we'll catch up in October when the Headless Horseman's about to drop. I'd love to know a bit more about it. Okay, great. Thank you. So yeah. good to meet you. Yeah, you too. We'll hopefully talk again. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.